What's going on guys? It's CTA Prime back here again. I think I found the perfect use for the GTX 1650. Now this is a low powered card. A lot of people have been complaining about this. It's a newer Nvidia card for around $150. Now this particular model that I have here is the Zotac GTX 1650 and it does not require any external power. So it doesn't have a six pin or an eight pin connector. All the power is delivered through the PCIe slot and it's got a TDP of 75 watts. So what I have here is one of my favorite single board computers connected to this GTX 1650. This is the Latte Panda Alpha, and we're going to go over the specs real quick. I've made a few videos. I'll leave links in the description. In the past, I've had to run separate power to these GPUs. I've tested a bunch of different GPUs on here, but I think that the 1650 is a great match for this little single board computer. And when it's all said and done, gaming performance is outstanding for being such a small little setup here. The Latte Panda is an awesome little x86 powered single board computer and inside of the box you're going to get the Latte Panda and your USB Type-C power adapter. That's how we power the Latte Panda. There are other ways but out of the box you'll be using USB Type-C. Basic specs are as followed. The CPU is an Intel Core M37Y30. This is a dual core CPU, 4 threads up to 4.6 GHz, 8 GB of LPDDR3 at 1866. 64 gigabytes of internal storage, but you can use an SD card, an external hard drive, or an M.2 SSD on the bottom. As for operating systems, you can install Windows 10, Linux, Mac OS, Android. There are a ton of different x86 operating systems that will work with this single board computer, but in this video we're going to be messing around with Windows 10. So I'm going to be adding this Zotac GTX 1650. This has a TDP of 75 watts. You do not need external power. Everything will be powered from the PCIe slot. In order to connect this video card to the Latte Panda, I'm going to be using an M.2 to PCIe X4 adapter connected to an M.2 slot on the bottom of the Latte Panda. Now this M.2 adapter is going to require external voltage because the M.2 connection itself just doesn't give out enough watts to power this GPU. And to do that, I'm using a modified Pico power supply. It's going to be 12 volts from the wall, we'll have one USB Type-C to power the Latte Panda, and one mini Molax to power the GPU. And real quick, just so you're still with me, the GTX 1650 will be connected to the Latte Panda using that M.2 to PCI X4 connector. I was looking at an easy way to get power to the Latte Panda and the GPU without having to use two separate cables plugged into the wall. And then it dawned on me, I already have a few of these little Pico power supplies laying around from tiny PC builds, and I figured I'd go ahead and modify this. Now here it is stock. It's got a Molex connector, mini Molex, SATA, and CPU power. After all, these are made to be plugged into a real motherboard to power a small, low-power PC build. What I've done here is totally do away with the CPU 4-pin connector, the SATA connector, and the full-size Molex. I left the mini Molex, and I've also added USB Type-C to power the Latte Panda. Now here's a quick breakdown. Mini Molex to PCIe X4, this is going to power our GPU. We also have that 12-volt USB Type-C connection to power the Latte Panda. And finally, the power in. This just uses a barrel jack, and I'm using a 120-watt 12-volt power supply. So even though I'm using a power brick from the wall, the whole unit is still very compact. I was even able to double side sticky tape this whole Pico power supply to the GPU itself. I then tidied up the wires and I think the whole unit came out looking pretty good. So all we're really going to have here is HDMI coming out from the big GPU to our monitor and power in from that 12 volt 120 watt power supply. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and see how this thing performs. All right, so here it is all set up. Got HDMI, power in. Also have my little USB adapter for my mouse and keyboard. This does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Looks like we're getting power to the Alpha and the GPU. Like I mentioned, I'm running Windows 10 Pro. I do need to install the new GPU driver for the GTX 1650. But it looks like it's going to boot up just fine. And there we go. Let me get the new drivers installed and I'll be right back. So I got everything installed. As you can see up here, we got the Intel Core M3 7Y30, one gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 2.6. Dual core, four thread, eight gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM, and finally, the NVIDIA GTX 1650. 
So I'm really interested to see how this performs with PC gaming at 1080p. We're going to go with medium high settings, hopefully on most of these games. I will be running Afterburner so we can see the GPU usage, CPU usage, temperature, and frame rate. First up, we have Doom 1080p high settings using the Vulcan backend. Very surprising to see this, but we're over 80 FPS on average. This little thing is trucking away here. Next up, we have Project Cars 2, 1080p, medium high mix settings. We're getting an average of around 66 FPS with this one. In the stage I'm running right now, we don't have weather on, and that's severely going to impact performance with this system, but you can always drop these settings down. So I've tested this game in the past on the Latte Panda Alpha with an even beefier GPU and we can never reach 60 FPS even at 720p. The CPU is just not powerful enough for GTA 5, but you could set VSync to half and get 30 all day. Here, 1080p, normal settings, it's really not that bad for a super small rig like this. CSGO, 1080p, high settings. Yes, this is a bot match here because I can't even test it if I get online. I'm horrible at this game and I'll die immediately. But we're averaging 77 to 78 at high settings, 1080p in a bot match. So I'm sure if you start lagging a little bit, you could drop the settings down in a real world match. Quick fighting game, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, 1080p, medium settings, constant 60, and I'm pretty sure we could have went to high with this, but I didn't want any lag in this game at all. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have Skyrim Remastered 1080p, medium settings. We're sitting at an average of 59, it does drop down every once in a while, but it's perfectly playable on this system. This system is also pretty good for emulation. This is the Dreamcast emulator, ReDream, running Sonic Adventure 2 at 1080p. It's a little under because we have that 4x3 aspect ratio. Unfortunately, this system isn't great for PS2 or SimU because of the CPU speed. There are some games that are going to run on both systems, but don't expect it to run everything. But GameCube and Wii emulation using Dolphin is great as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, the system will run it. This is Mario Kart Double Dash at 1080p. So basically, this will do any system under the GameCube except for PS2. If you want to do PSP, even Sega Saturn, it will handle it.
So overall, the GTX 1650 does pair with the Latte Panda Alpha pretty well. Now, I wouldn't expect you to go out and build something like this just for gaming. You can get out a lot cheaper and have more power by buying used parts. Get an old Optiplex with a third gen i5. But if you already have a Latte Panda Alpha or you were dead set on buying one, just know that you can add some pretty decent GPU performance by adding an external GPU like the GTX 1650. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to leave links for everything I used in this video in the description in case you want to build something like this or build a little power adapter for an external GPU on the Latte Panda Alpha you already own. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel. If there's anything else you want to see running on this rig, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.